This video is sponsored by Squarespace. So on Harder and Steambeck's website, they say the following. The Ultra 2024 brings all of Harder and Steambeck's huge investment into our engineering over the last five years. Blah, blah, you get the idea. Essentially, if you have the new Ultra and you follow their process and suggested way of doing things, they say that you'll get great results in your first airbrushing session. Is that corporate waffle or is it true? Let's find out. So a couple of weeks ago, I made a video trying to overcome my fear of the airbrush. I made a ton of mistakes, had a breakdown, but in the end, came out with this. Not horrendous, room for improvement. I'd say I enjoyed myself, but that might have been a bit of a lie. A couple of things happened after I released that video. I got a ton of comments from you guys offering advice and wisdom, which is always appreciated. I also had a call with a lovely chap from Harder and Steambeck, Warwick. We had a great talk about all things airbrushing and I got my hands on their new Ultra and some quick tuition on how to use the bloody thing. So looking at the new Ultra, I don't want to just regurgitate Harder and Steambeck's video and website. So here's my interpretation of it in as few seconds as possible so we can get to the painting. It's an airbrush, you plug it in, you fill it with paint and you're away. This one, however, has training wheels and does some thinking for you. Allow me to explain. It's got this collar with different settings for different kinds of painting. It's similar to something you'd find on the Evolution, but it takes away options and gives you five main ones. Prime, base, a one, two, and a three. You use this with paint diluted 50-50 with thinner, and you vary the distance as you go, and you're off. Distances are either a fist away from your miniature for the more general uses, three fingers, or a bit closer than that, as you get dialed in to those higher numbers. So is this a foolproof system that gets out of the way so you can get airbrushing? Or will it be too restrictive and get in the way rather than out of the way? So I'm gonna have a go at something which I think is generally quite unobtainable for me, and that is try and follow a cult of paint tutorial. Those guys know they're airbrushing, so I think it might be quite a fun one to try. Never done one before, it might be a train wreck. So let's see what happens. I'm just taking a quick pause from airbrushing to have some vitamins because there's two things that we know are important in life. Taking care of one's health and building websites with Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in-one website platform designed for you to succeed and stand out online. Whether you're just starting out or you're already established, Squarespace makes it easy to create a beautiful website engage with your audience and sell anything from products to content to time. With Fluid Engine, a next generation website design system from Squarespace, it's never been easier for anyone to unlock unbreakable creativity. Start with the best in class website template and customize every design detail with reimagined drag and drop technology for desktop or mobile. Get started with one of Squarespace's professional website templates with designs for every category and use. Then you can customize your look, update the content, and add features to fit your unique needs. You can make any Squarespace template do what you want, so your idea, brand, or business stands out online. If you want to sell anything, Squarespace has got you covered. Sell your products in an online store, whether you sell physical, digital, or service products, Squarespace has the tools you need to start selling online. So check out squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, head to squarespace.com forward slash the painting phase to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Hey guys, Patrick here. I'm using VO Airbrush Primer and as instructed by Warwick, aiming for a satin finish when I'm applying it. If it looks too glossy, then that's too much paint and your flooding detail. Color sets prime, thinner in first, Thanks for that tip. This seems to work really, really well. That way, no undiluted paint touches the needle and gums up the works. Fist, distance apart, keep the brush moving. Let's go. Hopefully you can see that I'm trying to feather the trigger a bit more this time, so I'm not just chucking the paint on too quickly. Prime done, now onto the next bit. One thing that I kind of struggle with a bit as well is cleaning the brushes and the sort of faff around it. Simple system for this. Put your airbrush cleaner in, work the needle back and forth so you're covering all of it in your cleaner. Dump that out, bit more cleaner, brush it about with a nice big brush. Use that same brush to stab the needle a bunch. Done. Little cleans every time you change colour and then nothing 
builds up and clogs up. Time for the base coat. Base coat setting mixed up in one of these little metal dishes so I could feel all fancy. I'm using some of the Tamiya thinner here. I know that lots of people use it with the Tamiya paints, but mixed in with others, I've heard that it's, that it's pretty good, so I thought I'd give it a go. So quick pit stop now that my priming and my base coats are done. I'm really happy with the results. Definitely better than any previous attempt that I've had. Um, using this like the collar so I can't pull back too far and maintaining the correct sort of distance I've got results I've got good results this is perfectly serviceable absolutely fine ideal um, priming with an airbrush really straightforward cleaning it out between colors and all that sort of stuff it has been my apologies hassle free so far um, long may that continue but I'm fully aware that this is only the basics and I'm moving on to the highlights and Tamiya paints and stuff now, which I've never used before. So I hear they're amazing through I hear they're amazing through an airbrush. Um, and I've got the thinner. So it's one of that, one of that, three of that. I've just bought some of these little metal mixing uh, dishes just because that's what I see people use. So hopefully that's, that's a good thing. So yeah, it's about to get tricky, yeah? Let's give it a go. Now the fun bit, I've heard amazing things about Tamiya paints through an airbrush. The thinner hits a bit differently, but Jesus, it's good. The paint builds up so nicely. It's amazing. All those smooth layers and transitions and all that sort of stuff. It's great. Definitely overdid it with the mid-tone. I got a, mixed up a bit too much paint. And got carried away and wanted to use it all so i've removed a bit too much of the uh of the shadows there i think so that first sort of bony color was flat earth and flat flesh going in with the flat flesh i think i could have pushed the highlight further but i got a bit nervous and 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 didn't want to take it too far but again because i've covered those shadows a bit too much i think it it, it maybe doesn't read quite as well so i just put a layer of gloss varnish over everything so i'm going to put some transfers on um yeah that was good that was really good like i thought this kind of tutorial for me to follow was so so far away from me being able to do um but again sticking to the rules diluting stuff it's all kind of worked it's not perfect obviously uh, the worst offending area where I just sort of lost concentration and got way too close is on one of these legs. Um, and that's, that's not, it's not the worst thing in the world. I, I'll probably just cover it with weathering or something like that, you know, um, put a load of dust on there or something. Yeah. Like we'll figure it out. But, um, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm happy, which is, which is good, which is good. Um. If you saw my previous airbrushing video, at like the midpoint in the video was when I was uh, just ready to cry. But this is lovely. And this airbrush is awesome. I think for... And I'm, not, I'm going to take as little credit as possible in this scenario. Thanks to Court of Paint. Thanks to Warwick and Harder and Steenbeck because this airbrush is fantastic. It just allows me to mess up less. One of my sort of complaints last time was if something was going wrong, I wasn't really sure what it was. Whereas now I'm able to figure out where I'm going wrong and then I'm making less mistakes because of it. Does that make sense? I've had a wonderful time. I'm going to wait for this gloss varnish to dry, try and find some transfers. Um, let's see if I can get this finished. I'm not going to go through step by step what I've done. You, you, you can watch the, uh, the professionals do that.
So the results are in. Apart from forgetting to paint the purity seal, we are done. Thoughts about the brush. It's awesome. It reeks of sensible decisions made to improve the user experience. And that sounds really boring, but I can't begin to describe how great it is. The brush and the system with fingers and fists, etc. It's simple, it's easy to follow, and it's got enough out of the way that I could focus on doing something that I thought was completely unachievable, and I think that's brilliant. I've watched Court of Paint videos for years. This is the first one that I've followed. The fact that I'm now looking at a completed miniature that I've painted, I, th I think is quite profound. I'm not really sure what else to say. Um, oh, I've missed a bit of gold. There we go. That's, that's something else that I can say. But what a night and day difference um, using this was from my previous, uh, previous attempt. I genuinely can't quite believe it. Um, it's, it's awesome. Um, I've had an absolute blast. I feel way more confident using this. I mean, there's so much about this brush that I haven't even gone into yet. Like the little design choices that just make things so much easier. Like the, the dual action trigger, you can't actually pull it back until you've pressed it down. So that eliminates chances of pulling it back and accidentally pressing it down and chucking paint all over your miniature. You know, I, I think the collar worked really, really good. Initially, I thought it might be a little bit too restrictive for some reason, but I can't really see myself needing any more than the options that they've given me. And if you don't want it, you can just easily, there you go, get rid of it and then screw that back on. Um, it's awesome. Um, I've thoroughly enjoyed myself and had a great time. Hopefully that's come across. This brush is exceptional. I think it's the perfect place to start if you're looking to get into airbrushing. Um, it's certainly one that I'm going to enjoy using for quite a bit, I think. Um, I do have the Evolution as well. I'm keen to try that out, but I don't know if I need to quite yet. I'm keen to uh, play with this a bit more and uh, and see how I get on. But thank you so much for watching. Uh, thank you to all our patrons for your continued support. And there is some links uh, down in the description if you wanted to check this out. Um, if you are looking to get into airbrushing and you, you don't really know where to start, I think I think this is probably currently the best place to do so.